I'm John Jenkinson. First things first, let's talk about the overnight sales because these have been making headlines here in the markets, it's particularly last week and already getting off to this week as well. Two sales of soybeans, one to Mexico, one to China. That soybean sale to Mexico this morning showed up from USDA at 250,371 metric ton and uh, 132,000 metric ton to China for the overnight sales. Now, the corn market got off to a little bit of a weaker start here from the overnight trade. And according to the latest information that we have here, we're about a penny to a penny and a quarter lower here over in the corn market with September down three quarters, the December down three quarters, that March is down a complete penny. But in the soybeans, now soybeans last night on the overnight trade going into the day trade were actually just a little bit firmer. And now we've got the August up two and a half cents at 905 and three quarters. That leaves us just a little ways, about a penny and a, a quarter here off of the high so far. November beans are up two and a quarter at $9 even. That leaves us a penny and a quarter under the high. And uh, so far, uh, still kind of on the uh, stronger side here. We're going to talk to Chris Swift here in just a moment, but I do want to look at the wheat market here this morning as well. Chicago wheat got off to a seven cent lower start this morning, and that's kind of that's basically where we're at on that front month. The rest of those contracts anywhere from three to six cents lower. Kansas City wheat down eight on the September, down seven and a half on the December, and down six and a half on the March. And Minneapolis wheat weaker start here to the day as well, down four and three quarters on the September. September, December down four cents and the March down three and three quarters. Chris Swift here with us this morning. Chris is with Swift Trading based in Nashville, Tennessee. Good morning, Chris. What do you think of the opens here uh, on this grain market? And I'll let you choose which commodity you want to focus on here first. All right. Good morning, John. Uh, the corn market looking a little soft this morning, and we know we've got great weather out there so far. The bean market, interesting because we continue to see more sales to China. We kind of wonder why that's not boosting the prices up near as much as what it is, and I guess simply because we got such a great bean crop out there right now. But wheat probably has the most interest of any of it, although down slightly today. Uh, we've seen a pretty good run in Chicago wheat, up about 70 cents off of its lows, and we know that they've had some troubles out in, in Russia and in the Ukraine with some of their wheat. Maybe that's getting a little bit better, but all in all, it looks like that wheat market uh, may actually have reversed just a little bit. I want to go back over here to the soybean market because you mentioned the uh, the, the crop ratings. We're going to have more on that. Uh, that'll be out late this afternoon, and we'll talk about this more tomorrow. But are we basically out of a weather market now for uh, for soybeans or, or getting close to the end of a weather market, do you think? I think so. I think a little bit of moisture. We've, we've seen these pop-up showers just about every afternoon come and hit certain different areas, and it seems like every area that it hits, it really improves the bean crops quite a bit. Um, some of the uh, beans that have been planted in behind the uh, wheat, they seem to have come right up real well, really well, so I, I see that uh, continuing from here. Okay. Uh, and the corn market, of course, a little bit here on the weaker side. Looks like this crop, uh, according to some of the trades, say this, uh, this thing may be finished in pretty good shape. It really does look that way. I think this afternoon's progress report will kind of show you that it's still way ahead of the game, and the early planting has helped out. And although we've had some really hot weather, it, it doesn't seem like it's been very um, you know, de detrimental to the crop so far. Well, the cattle market certainly is rallying with a little bit of pressure over in the hogs. We're going to talk about that with Chris on the other side of this break. So stay with us. We've got more coming up here on the Monday morning edition of the Market Day Report. We'll be back in just a moment. Well, I mentioned the strength over here in the cattle market, a big move in the feeders, and we're going to ask Chris Swift about that. But first of all, the live cattle market, and that's what a lot of the cash watches and vice versa. So the live cattle now up 27 on the August. August the October is up 55 at 105.67, and the December's at 109.17. Look at this. You go all the way out to April, we're at 114.40. So we're up about 40 to 50 cents on many of those contracts. Now, the feeder cattle market, it's got a little bit bigger move than that. And, and uh, some of these contracts are actually a dollar plus higher, with August up a dollar now at 142.05, the September up 92, the October up 102. Hogs, not the case this morning. The early calls were for a little bit of a weaker start, and we've got it. August down 25, the October down 45, and the December down 95. And uh, I want to go back over here and talk with Chris Swift about the cattle on feed report and the cattle inventory report. When you first saw this report come out here on the cattle on feed, uh, what were your thoughts? 
Well, it was construed just a little bit negative. I was hesitant to say it's bearish, but we had 100% on fade. We had a 100% on the inventory. And if you recall two days earlier, we had about a 5, 5.5% increase in our cold storage. So supply seems to be very ample. And the only thing that I can imagine why the prices are up today, especially just on the futures and not the cash, it's the stimulus package. It's seemingly like every market out there has now become very attuned to when the Fed rings the bell, they begin salivating like Pavlov's dog, ready for that stimulus money to come and boost their market up. Oh, that leaves the, uh, the question then, is this cattle market, or protein complex in a whole, is it leaning too much on these headlines of, of possible more coronavirus aid? Well, it, and it's hard to say, but what we do know is we believe that we have elevated pork production, we have elevated beef production, and we have fewer establishments to market those products through. So although we know the consumer may continue to be eating at their 2.2, 2.3 pounds a week per uh, per week of beef, there's somewhere in there that we're missing something, and I'm not real sure what it is, but I think it's going to be difficult to see the consumer really ramp up demand right here in the middle of summertime, as hot as it is, and believing that we have ample plenty of supply to meet any demand that comes about. Okay, so what does that mean for the uh, cattle producer themselves when they see these kind of prices? I think these kind of prices are some of the highest that we've seen ever since the uh, the COVID issue happened in March. And, you know, we always try to like to sell high and buy low. And right now, these are some of the highest prices we've seen. Okay. Uh, one final question then over here on the hog complex then, uh, with the lean hogs being weaker by uh, almost a dollar now. Uh, this This chart was looking pretty good. It, it was. When you look at the December and the out months beyond that, they've contracted into a very, very fine uh, price range. So there's going to have to be something to come about to push them out of that price range in either direction once you get beyond this August time frame. All right. Well, uh, some of that's also going to hinge on what we see uh, go on with the U.S. dollar as well when it comes to exports. And this morning, that U.S. dollar index is down 780 points at 93,600. Chris Swift, thank you so much. Great to talk to you, and we'll talk to you again very soon. Janet, there is the latest from the Market Desk. Back to you, ma'am. All right. As always, thank you very much, John and gentlemen that participated.